Hey, hope you're having a great day. Today, we're going to talk about podcast making apps that help you inject a bit of lightning into your podcasting process, both simplifying and speeding it up. So let's look at what apps can help you in your podcasting. Hey, it's Colin here from The Podcast Host and from Alitu covering podcast making apps today. What I want to do is look at just podcast specific apps because as you know, if there's ever a problem encountered by the human race, there's somebody building an app to solve it. So we're going to look at which ones have been built for podcasters particularly. So it's not things like Audacity and Audition, it's things that really tackle podcasting problems specifically. So I've got a few specific options for you today, but I'm going to start with the one that we built because we did build it for our readers, for our audience, which hopefully includes yourself, and that is Alitu. Alitu is a podcast maker app. It was designed initially to simplify editing because so many of the people that read our website, the podcast host, it was the first question they had. It's why is editing so painful? Why do I have to learn this thing? It's just learning things like Audition or Audacity. It's more an audio engineering tool. It's for somebody that really wants so many features to create a full-on audio drama or something like that. But us, as podcasters, we need something quicker, simpler, more podcast-focused. That's what Alitu was. So you can record in there. There's call recording in there, just like you've got in Zoom or Squadcast or something like that. It takes that through to the library. It cleans up and away, so it does some noise reduction. It does the leveling, makes you sound good. Pops it into the episode builder, where you can then arrange all of the segments. You can add in your regularly occurring things. Your theme music is added automatically, does the transitions as well. And from there, you can edit too. You can cut out your mistakes. And Alitu is one of the few apps out there that is podcasting specific that offers full editing. So you can cut out mistakes anywhere inside your recording. You can split clips, you can trim them at the ends, all that stuff. You can edit, cut it out. And finally, publishing, of course, as well. You can publish to Alitu's hosting built in, free up to a thousand downloads, or you can publish to any other host out there as well. We have links with a number of the most popular hosts, or you can download your episode to put anywhere you like as well. A more recent addition as well is transcriptions. Alitu can now do a transcription for your full episode. So you can use that for accessibility purposes, you know, offer that text version, or it helps you create your show notes. It's a lot of written material based on your episode too. And one of my favorite things inside Alitu is the edit playback speed tool, actually. I asked for this to be built in just for me, <laughs> selfishly, but I wanted to be able to edit at two times speed or one and a half times speed. So I can start playing, I can listen through my episode, but I can put it on to one and a half times speed and I can get through that episode far quicker if it's something that I need to you know, go through and review the entire thing. Just to say too, your Alitu account also gives you access to our full music library, which is not just music, but it's music and it's stingers, it's bumpers, it's all of the other things to go along with it. So you get certain lengths of theme music, but you get little transitions that go along with the theme music as well. So it's more like music and sound effect packs. And equally, it also gives you access to a range of courses that are across our uh, whole teaching ecosystem, our academy and everything like that. So Alitu currently costs $38 per month, and that's for unlimited use of everything. And it's just one monthly subscription, and you get a thousand downloads per month of hosting for free included in that. So that means that most podcasters actually can stay within that thousand for quite a while. And then it's $9 to go up to the next level, which you'll see out 99% of podcasters for the long term. So it's strengths. You might want to use Alitu if you're looking for just one place to do everything from recording to editing right through to publishing. It's also one place to really simplify your podcasting as well. Simple tools built just for podcasters, but still gives you creative control. You can still do all the editing that you need to, which is lacking in some other podcast maker platforms. So a podcast making app worth looking at is the Podbean app. So Podbean are a media hosting juggernaut, been around for a long time um, in the podcasting space. And their app is really a good one for recording and creating that podcast in the first place. So you can get in there, you can record with many people. It's got a recording space. So you can record with up to uh, eight participants in multi-track as well. And you can record by mixing in your music as well. You can record everyone inside that room, mix in some music as you go, and really create a really nice sounding result. 
for that podcast episode. Now, all of this is recorded as live. You can pause if you want to during the recording, but that's pretty much it. That's all the editing you get in the podcasting, uh, in the Podbean app. So you've got to go for it. And I often recommend that, actually. It's a really nice way to podcast. It cuts down that editing in future. So if you can pull that off, by all means, go for it. But what Podbean lacks in those editing capabilities, doesn't really have much in the way of editing in there, it does make up for in that recording functionality, the fact that you can mix in the music, you can choose from their library of music as well, create something really nice when live producing. Now they also have the functionality to podcast live. So you can record as live, as I've said, but you can also actually broadcast that bring in speaker comments, speaker call-ins, all that kind of stuff. So you can do a live show with Podbean. Now, the benefit with Podbean as well, obviously they are a hosting platform, so you can publish direct to their hosting from that recording. So if you're happy to go ahead, you mix it in all live, you produce it live as you're recording, you don't need to take out any mistakes because you can't edit. As long as you're happy with that, you can publish direct to the hosting and you're done. So if you want to have a really clean, simple process, kind of go raw, you know, just as live and put it out there, then it's a great app to record and just get that show out there into the world. You can do it for free, you can try it out for free. Uh, there are some limitations around bandwidth, around time and usage, but the next level up is a $14 a month plan, which gives you way more options, much more towards unlimited usage to try it out. And you can also get a month's free hosting if you use the coupon code PODCRAFT. That's PODCRAFT. So the benefits of this, you might want to use the Podbean app if you're really keen to do some in-depth recording with multi-track, mixing in your music, doing it all live, and maybe even actually broadcasting it live to your audience, bringing in some audience interaction. The app is great for that. And if you're already a Podbean customer, maybe it works really well because you can publish direct to your hosting with them. Podbean are definitely a host worth looking at. They've got some great features in there like monetization, they've got premium content options offering subscriptions. You can check out the Podbean review if you go and have a look at the link in our description. It'll tell you everything else that Podbean offers. Another podcast app worth looking at is from Spreaker. So Spreaker are another podcast hosting platform who've released their own creation making app. Now, similar to Podbean in that it really has its strengths in recording and producing uh, and more producing live than anything else. Again, similar to Podbean. It's kind of like a, a live studio. It's got a mixing board where you can actually bring in sound effects and music. It offers tools like auto ducking so you can play music and it'll actually duck underneath your voice as you speak. And you can bring in calls, you can bring in guests. You can really produce that live recording right there in the speaker app. And again, similar to Podbean, you can record offline. So you can produce this just with your co-host or your guest without broadcasting it. But equally, you can broadcast as well. You can create a website uh, or a web page, I should say, where your, uh, your audience can come along and they can interact and they can listen live and give you feedback. So Spreaker, again, strengths in that live broadcasting does have an advantage over Podbean in that you can do at least a little bit of editing. It's still not full editing. You can't take out mistakes within the recording, but you can at least top and tail before you upload. So you can take off that kind of silence or the getting ready sounds or the, the stuff at the start and similarly at the end. So you can chop off a bit at the start, a bit at the end before you push it out to publishing. Speaker is similar to Podbean in terms of features. You can try it out for free, uh, but you're kind of limited in terms of usage and duration. Uh, next level up is a tier which is $8 per month, and that gives you more uh, usage. And you can get there and uh, really try it out. Now, if you do want to sign up, go over to the description below, check out our link, and you'll get some bonuses if you sign up through ourselves. Otherwise, give it a go. You might want to try this again if you want to be that live DJ, that live production, and a little bit extra editing options, just that top and tail, that trim on the back and the front of the recording, which gives it just a slight edge over what Podbean offers. Next, let's look at Spotify-owned Anchor. 
Uh, Anchor's been around a while. It was really just a, an audio sharing platform in the early days, but pivoted to uh, what it calls itself the simple, simple way to make a podcast. And it does offer the whole process from recording through to a little bit of editing through to publishing. It's a hosting platform as well. Now, Anchor has a few different uh, aspects to it worth talking about. One of its USPs is the fact that you can play Spotify music inside your podcast. In Anchor, for example, they offer that as a really nice feature, so you can put real music in. The only caveat to that being that those can only be listened to within Spotify. So if you have listeners outside of Spotify, which no doubt you do, then they won't be able to hear that music. That music can only play inside the Spotify listening app. And equally, you can't talk over these either. They can only be inserted in between. So it's got to be an interlude, or maybe if you're doing a music show, or you're doing a DJ type show, could be good, but it can work for some types of shows, certainly. In terms of the creation tools, Anchor's editing used to be really limited. You couldn't really do much with editing at all. Nowadays, you can take out some mistakes. It's still uh, rough, but it still works. So you can go in there and take out some mistakes. And equally, they've got a library of sound effects and music that you can pop into your show as well. And those ones you can use as beds, background for your voice or anything like that. So you can have some more creative options to put your show together. Anchor's recording tools are potentially the least reliable in this roundup. We've found uh, issues with syncing. We've had a lot of feedback around people having trouble with that. But on the other hand, it's worked well for plenty of people too. So it could well work for you. Give it a shot, see if it works for your context. So you can use Anchor as a browser app, just directly in your web browser, or you can use it as a mobile app as well. So you can record and produce using your mobile. And Anchor is entirely free. Uh, you can monetize through them. They do encourage you to put in adverts for Anchor, that kind of stuff, but there's ways around some of that. So as a place to test things out, to test the waters, certainly it is a good place to start out. Many people start with Anchor and then move on to a more advanced platform that offers more options, more ownership in future. So you can see how that process might work for you. Now let's look at Descript as a podcast making tool. Now Descript has a few of the standard features you can record in there. They have video editing features as well, but really the kind of standout thing with Descript is the fact that you can edit with text. So you can actually get a transcription from Descript. They show that transcription on screen and you can select words, you can select sentences and edit it like you would in a word processor and then it removes that from the audio. Now this can work really well for some people. The cuts can be a little rough, but sometimes they work really well. So it's up to you, you can get in there, you can play around with it, you can see which ones work for you. And they've got a really cool feature around this kind of overdub, whereby if you type another bit of text in, they use AI to get your voice and actually read out those words in your voice, which is really weird, but it does work to some extent. It can come out sounding quite strange, but sometimes it sounds great as well. So Descript is a funny one. It's a great tool. It's got plenty of good features in there, good for making a podcast. And some of those AI versions, some of those AI based ones, the text based editing can work really well in some contexts as well. Worth noting on the pro tier as well, so paying a little bit more, you get some functionality around highlighting and trying to remove those ums and ahs. Sometimes, again, works quite well. It's the same as any AI-based tool, really. Depends a little bit on your accent, depends a little bit on the approach. Sometimes it works well, other times it's kind of a little bit off, removes all the different types of words. But again, worth trying in your context to see if it works well for you. At this point, Descript is really for creation, so it's for recording and editing. You'll still need a hosting app separately, no hosting included at this point. But for just that creation side of things, it holds up really well. Descript is a desktop app where you can use it in the browser, and they do have a very limited free tier, so you can try it out quite easily, a bit like a free trial initially. And then they've got tiers at $12, $24, and it's all per seat. So if it's just you running the podcast alone, could be quite good value. But bear in mind that the more people you add, uh, the higher that price climbs if you have a co-host or you have a team that's working on it. So you might want to use Descript if you want to try out their text editing method. Some people swear by having to use a, you know, an audio wave and being able to edit in audio and listening, but others are finding that that text editing can work well for them. 
Um, or if you want to try out some of the AI stuff, like the removing the ums and the ahs, or uh, any of the overdubbing, getting your voice in there, being able to type in stuff for you to say. So it could be worth a shot, see how it works for you. To start to tie things up, just to note that these tools are changing, improving so often. Every time I look at them, there's something new, something different, and new tools coming in every day as well. It's so cool that, you know, people are realizing that podcasters, they don't want to be audio engineers. You don't want to learn the intricacies of compression and EQ or like eight track editing and all the different bells and whistles that go with that. We want tools built for podcasting. And that is what we're getting nowadays. So a final couple just to tie up with that are definitely improving as we go. One is Libsyn's Libsyn Studio. Libsyn Studio does offer some editing capabilities. It's got a music library in there and it can do a bit of audio cleanup as well, like noise reduction. So if you do use Libsyn for your hosting, perhaps worth a look and it's developing as we go as well. The other, an interesting one, is called Clean Voice. Clean Voice, now Clean Voice is all about what we talked about a little bit in the descript section around removing your crutch words, your filler words. Clean Voice is aiming to help you remove those ums and those ahs and those filler words for you. Um, and it seems to be developing really well as well. So we're gonna keep an eye on that and we'll have better and fuller reviews on them in the near future. So which app is best for you? Which podcast maker app will make your podcasting workflow the best? The answer is always, of course, it depends. <laughs> Well, Alitu's aim is to give content creators the most control and flexibility over their podcast, make things as easy as possible. So if you're, say, a solopreneur, run a small business, or you're taking your podcast seriously, don't mind investing a little bit into that. Alitu will give you the biggest suite of tools to create your show in a quick way, an easy way, and keep that creative control. Full editing, transcription, hosting, everything all in one place. That's what it's for. And next, we have Anchor. Anchor's big draw is that it's free, of course, and it is developing all the time as well. It's a super simple process, has some nice tools in there. The editing is getting better. You've got more control there. There's always still been some issues over the ownership, kind of uh, advertising and owning your own feed and stuff like that. But again, some of that stuff's been cleared up as well. So if you want somewhere easy, quick, simple, and free to try out your podcast, maybe even to move on somewhere else later, but at least to start it with, Anchor is a great place to do that dabbling. Next, we have Spreaker, their recording app, and I'll put in Podbean with that as well. Both Spreaker and Podbean have very similar types of functionality. You can record a show really well, you can live broadcast it. So if you want to really record as live, get that thing produced and created as quick as you can, no editing required and get it out into the world, then both those apps will do a good job for you. Again, Spreaker just gives you a little bit more editing functionality, being able to trim that start and the end, but even then, it's still just a little bit. So if you're with Podbean or you're with Spreaker for hosting, certainly, and you want to do that live broadcast, they're worth a look. Finally, we've got Descript. Now, Descript is worth a look if you want to firstly get into video. They do offer much more video functionality. Or if you want to try out those AI-based features and try out that editing by text type of approach. So it could work for you depending on the type of recording you do, depending on how you speak, your voice, all that kind of stuff, the transcriptions, the accuracy, you get there. Give it a shot, see if it works for you. And then you can try that weird type in uh, a sentence and hear the computer read it out in your voice and see if that's something that would be useful. Remember, of course, if you're thinking about Descript to factor in the cost of podcast hosting as well, since Descript doesn't have that currently. So add that onto the cost when you're considering whether it's worth your money. So I hope that's given you a good rundown of the best podcast maker apps out there right now. Helps you choose which one might suit your context. You can always go to read the article. We have a full written article on this. Go and look at the description below. And we also have an article which goes even wider into all of the software related to podcasting. So anything else as well. So going into, for example, some of the more in-depth DAWs type audio engineering type tools or all recording tools or editing tools solo. So if you want to check that out, go and have a look at the description below. You'll find our best software for podcasting article there. All right, that's it for today. I hope that helps you streamline your podcasting process. Please do hit that alert button 
wherever it is over there somewhere so that you see our new content coming out uh, when it does so you can keep up with it. Um, and thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate your time and hopefully we'll see you on a future video. Hey folks, have a...